When to use an epic versus a story in Jira. Let's talk about it. Hey everyone, I have a simple question for everyone. How do you ensure that your dev tickets don't stall if someone is on leave? Resolution has a simple answer. Just install their out of office assistant and make sure that those tickets are automatically reassigned. It's super easy, but for some reason, many people don't know about this app. Make sure you click on the link in the description below for a 20% discount. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section down below. All right, so we need to talk about when is it appropriate to use epics versus when is it appropriate to use stories within the world of Jura. So let's start off by defining what these are, and then we're gonna go into Jura and look at some examples and their behavior so you can understand fundamentally under the hood how Jura treats them differently and when you should use one versus the other. So let's start off with talking about epics. An epic is a large, high level user requirement that cannot, I'm gonna stress this, that cannot be completed within a single sprint. By definition, the epic is going to span the work, the effort, the level of effort required, the amount of things that need to be done for that epic. All of it together spans, it's bigger, it's greater, it's longer, it takes more time than what the sprint allows. So you gotta think of this as something big. It's called an epic for a reason. Think about it like an actual book, right? So an epic is something really, really big. Because Jira doesn't do features, I like to think of my epics as features or capabilities or just something big, something that your customer is going to really enjoy, like being able to add something to a cart or being able to log into a website. These are big functionalities, capabilities, features that cannot usually when you do the whole thing, right? Setting up databases, passwords, accounts, tracking all the login credentials, authentication, all those things. There's a lot of little stuff that goes together to make up an epic and all of it, usually just the epic by itself, cannot be completed within a single iteration or a single sprint. So by that definition, it's going to be big. It's gonna be a big item, a big high level requirement that is just gonna span longer, usually longer, and usually involve a lot of people than the sprint. So that is how we're defining the epic. Now, when we go contrast that versus a user story, or in Jira, they just call it a story, well, the story is concise, it's specific, it's actionable, it's estimatable. It is something that just describes a small need, a small functionality, a just something really, really achievable within the bounds of the sprint. Where people usually get tripped up is that their stories are so undefined, so poorly defined, that they are usually epics and they just don't recognize it and they try to accomplish that story within the bounds of that sprint, only to realize three fourths of the way into the sprint that, uh oh, this really should have been an epic and we should decompose it. So that's kind of where we're coming from from the story's perspective. You should be able to follow the invest principle, okay? So these stories should be small. And the smaller, the better, folks. The smaller and the more concise, the more well-defined, the better your story is going to be. Because from the perspective of the end user, they're really going to be able to use the story. And that is, again, the purpose of the story. It's a value-added thing. It's something that your customer is going to be able to take advantage of. And a combination of all these stories eventually will lead to a product, into a capability or feature, aka your epic. Now, you shouldn't treat your epics and your stories as two separate, unrelated things. These two should be very, very much related. And right now, when we go into Jira, I'm going to show you that relationship. I'm going to show you how that parent-child relationship is preserved and utilized inside of the world of Jira. But I did want to start off, and hopefully it's a lot more clear now, what is an epic and what is a story. And, and hopefully you have enough information here to kind of understand the differences between the two. So you should be able to think about it and look at the scope of the work and go, hmm, is this something that a lot of people are gonna have to contribute to? And is the potential complexity, the potential ask for this functionality so big such that we have a very low chance of actually being able to complete it in the sprint? And if the answer is yes, 
then that item should really be an epic and then be decomposed into user stories. Because remember, the user stories, you should be thinking, hmm, this is a very well-defined, very concise, very specific, very estimatable and testable requirement. We have a good story here that is going to allow one individual, hopefully, fingers crossed, be able to complete it, again, fingers, fingers really crossed here, within the bounds of the sprint. So that's going to be your differences there. Are you assigning issues to people on PTO? Without a vacation calendar inside of Jura, your tickets can stall out for weeks. Don't let your Agile delivery stall because somebody's on PTO. Resolution has the perfect solution for Agile teams of all sizes with their Out of Office Assistant app for Jura. Fix your current workflows by appointing backup owners and ensure throughput doesn't stall when team members are away on vacation or holiday. Check out the Out of Office Assistant in the Atlassian Marketplace and get a 20% discount with the code in the description below. So let's go jump into Jira and actually see how these behave and how these are treated inside of Jira. So here we are in an active sprint. Now, a couple of things that you want to know. When you're going to start, I always recommend that you think about epics first because I just like thinking top down. You don't have to go this way, but trust me when I tell you that if you start thinking about your work from a top down perspective, life is going to be so much easier for you. And you can do that by going into your timeline because when you go into your timeline, you will automatically be in the right view so you can just start creating epics. And this is going to make life so much easier because you're able to start at the epic level and start decomposing very, very easily. And the parent-child relationship is automatically preserved for you. Because if you go down the route of hitting the create button, well, you're then going to have to worry about establishing the relationships between those epics and those stories. And it's just a little bit more work. But when you're in the timeline view, all you got to do is type in some names, click enter. If you have required fields, then you'll be prompted to enter those required fields. But this interface and this method is just so much cleaner, so much more efficient than just hitting the create button and then trying to figure out how to do all the relationships later. So when you're in this view, this I like too, because now Jira is really going to take advantage of epics. The timeline is really designed for the epics and the stories for that matter. But you can see that your epics will have a progress bar. And it's going to tell you, based on the number of children and the statuses of the children, how is this epic trending? How are we doing? Are we almost close to delivering this functionality or not? And of course, you can associate your stories, your tasks, and your bugs to this epic and have a better visibility as to how that epic is doing from an overall functionality and capability perspective. So that's really, really cool. Now, when you're in the backlog view, keep a, keep a special attention here to JSM 2-6. Because when you go to the backlog view, you're going to have a very, very hard time finding that JSM 2-6. If you look at the numbers over here, you're not going to find it. And that is because Atlassian understands the value of the epic. And it understands the positioning of the epic relative to the world of planning your sprints. And it knows, if you remember from how I introduced this video, it knows that those epics are supposed to be bigger than your sprint. And when you're in this backlog view, this is when you're planning your sprint. As you can see here, I have my sprint number three here with the backlog. And so ideally, only your tasks, only your bugs, and only your stories are going to be planned into a sprint. And so at last, it strategically even hides the epic from you and puts it in an epic pane over here on the left that you then need to go and kind of expand. You, this is where you can change colors and stuff like that. But this is now where you're going to find your JSM 2-6 because it's kind of like tucked away to the side because Atlassian understands that these epics are just so big in scope that they're there as a reference point. They're not there to be like the actual work that is going to be worked on and delivered, but rather the children of it. And you can see this relationship here now because when I click on this epic here, it will hide. And maybe I did it too fast for you, so let me, let me do it again for you, right? When you see that I have uh, all these issues on my backlog and in my sprint, but if I click on the epic, it will hide everything else. And you can kind of see this, right? One of two visible, two of seven visible. It's hiding everything else that's not related to that epic. And it is now giving me a focused view of these are the stories. Again, those concise, those very specific, small stories that are going to be the ones that you're going to focus on for the sprint or potentially, right? So you're now going to be able to use this epic as a as a guide to help you and your team, specifically your product owner, your scrum masters, figure out, okay, what should we be working on this sprint? And now you can drag in all the stories related to that epic into the sprint so you can have a more focused sprint and, and be more effective and efficient in that manner. And so that's kind of 
how this backlog is treating it. And now when we go over to the active sprint, you're going to see that you have some options in your board. Now, I don't typically recommend this, but another cool way to look at this is you can actually go to your board settings here. And if you go to your swim lanes, you can actually change your swim lanes to be based off your epics. So if you're looking at your epics and your stories and you're doing this correctly, you can now see by the epic, again, by the functionality, by that capability your team is trying to deliver, you're gonna be able to see, okay, here are my stories that are related to that epic and I can collapse it and I would show a laundry list of all the epics that my team is working on. And again, you don't update the epic in a sprint because it's all about the stories at that point. It's all about the stories, the tests and the bugs and their relation to that epic. Now, you may be asking yourself at this point, okay, so how does that relation work? Well, it's really, really simple. It's gonna be changing in the near future, so I am gonna have to do an updated video on this, but when you open up any epic, and I'm gonna go to my actual epic over here, you're gonna notice that you have these child issues, and so you have the ability to add a child issue here. And when you do that, the epic name, as you can see here, we have an epic name field, where, keep in mind we're in the epic, so the epic name, which is typically the same name as the title, as a summary, right? But the epic name is going to play a critical role because now when I open up the story, I'm gonna go look at the epic link and you'll notice that the epic link is referring or referencing that epic name. And so that epic name in the epic and the epic link in the story should be the same. And when they are the same, Jira then associates and, and basically establishes a parent-child relationship between that epic and that story. So it's very, very critical that you understand how this works so that your stories aren't just orphans because you don't really want to just have a random story in your backlog. While it is okay and it's doable, but you want to have intention. You want to have purpose for all your stories because, because keep in mind that those stories are going to be planned into your sprints and because of the work that your team's actually gonna be doing, you're paying these, these, this labor, right? This employee labor, right? You're paying salaries and contracts and stuff. And so you don't wanna just waste money by randomly working on stories. You want your stories to have a purpose. You want them to be tied to the epic, which by the way, your epic should be tied to a roadmap. And they're, they should be tied to milestones and releases. And then everything kind of starts to make sense because you have full traceability top to bottom as to the work that your team's doing and how you're trending towards completing a particular project. If you've ever assigned dev issues to someone who is on vacation, remember that the out of office assistant for Jira is there for you and it is incredibly easy to set up and use. It has integrations with Slack and Tempo and you can connect to Outlook or Google Calendar using Zapier. So you don't even have to maintain any dates, super easy to use. Try it out today and get 20% off by using the promo code in the description down below. I bet it won't disappoint you. Anyways, that's it for this one. If you did enjoy it, I want you to check out the link in the description below and how you can support the channel using all the sponsor links and everything that I have, all those goodies down there. And also please keep in mind that this video is part of the Summer of Atlassian 2.0, which means we are trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of summer. So your subscription to this channel will help more than anything. So it's completely free. All you gotta do is hit that subscribe button down below and you're gonna help us get closer to that goal. Make sure you like the video, make sure you have any comments, questions, or concerns down in the comment section down below. I do respond to every single one of them, so just let me know down below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need